The device that I invented is the Y-scope, the visual stethoscope, which is the first of its kind, continuous, real-time, high definition. It's a coincidence, HD, it's also our company name, but it's truly high definition, sound quality, and it's a visual stethoscope. So unlike a current stethoscope where you can just see the, I mean, you can just hear the sounds. Here, you can actually see what you hear. And uh, as you can see over here, there is a, a visual display which actually shows you the hard sounds, as well as if you have any murmurs that are present, it actually shows that. And the sound amplification is more than 30 times, and it can actually have the ability to detect murmurs and analyze the sounds and save them in a PC for serial studies and follow-up, and also document the report, because that's one of the biggest problems with the stethoscope. It would never give you an opportunity to document. There is no paper trail. And today in this modern evidence-based, you know, with all the legal suits and things like that, if you want to document things and compare them year after year, how the patient's abnormalities have progressed and so on. So that's where this really helps you do that. And also, it gives you the ability to transmit these sounds because that can truly enable next generation telemedicine as well as home healthcare applications. And so I've been using this device now intensely for a year. I don't use anything else uh, in, in auscultation. Uh, and uh, having on-demand, real-time phono as you listen uh, has been really extremely interesting uh, and I think has improved uh, my own skills um, uh, and, uh, and teaching. This looks to me to be a very elegant device and certainly it seems to me that it will have many, many different applications, both in research, as was shown very nicely, the preceding three lectures, but also clinically. Uh, specifically, I think, where I would think for my role, in my role as a teacher, uh, teaching medical students and house staff, uh, I think it would be very important uh, in helping the novice uh, time murmurs and sounds. It has been my experience that uh, uh, the most difficult thing many students have is to time a murmur. Just last week, making rounds with a fourth year medical student from a very prominent West Coast medical school, <laughs> uh, she was totally, it was not ours. <laughs> it, was not, it was not UCSF. <laughs> uh, she had ongoing difficulty determining whether a murmur was systolic or diastolic, something very, very elementary. And uh, something like this uh, would be very helpful. Over the last 20 years, I've been uh, uh, giving uh, a standardized auscultation test to medical students, uh, internal medicine residents, and fellows. Uh, and. Uh, I can tell you that my results and the results of other people who have done the same thing uh, in the literature uh, shows basically that we don't uh, teach auscultation very well, or at least people have not learned it very well. For the medical students, their ability to detect uh, the usual heart sounds and murmurs uh, about 30 percent. The internal medicine residents get up to 40 percent and the fellows get up to 50 to 60 percent. There is a gradient but it's, it's uh, not, the slope is very small. Anything that focuses on trying to make the physician a better physician uh, is going to be valuable. And certainly, being able to watch the photocardiogram as you listen will make it uh, more likely that you will be, a, be focusing on, uh, on the, what you're hearing and what, is, uh, what the sounds that you're hearing actually mean, what they're physiologically related and pathophysiologically related to. I said, so I think it's going to be very good for teaching. Electronic stethoscope may improve the diagnosis uh, of aortic stenosis and a progression of it, 
and decrease healthcare costs, especially in patients with mild to moderate AS, where you recommend routine follow-ups in patients who, with, with uh, non-significant disease. Now, I work at Kaiser Redwood City, and we get these emails once every quarter on um, the physicians and the ordering of echo tests per 1,000 patients. And there's no financial tie-ins with this, but I think the future of, of, of cardiology with healthcare reform is that there's going to be restriction, more, more and more restrictions on test ordering. No, I would like to commend you, Nelson, and your co-investigators for taking the bull by the horn, so to speak, and resurrecting the art of phonocardiography and showing how important information can be gotten out of it with relatively simple means. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you.